So quite possibly the most important thing that I've learned whilst building up this channel and building my career is to avoid perfectionism. But before we go into that, thank you to all my subscribers. A half a million sounds really good and I'm really pleased. I obviously appreciate every single subscriber and it's a wonderful feeling knowing that that many people are interested in what I do. And I guess really that's what everybody wants is this sort of validation of what they're doing is worthwhile. And I think half a million subscribers certainly feels that way. It's really nice to think that I might be introducing lots of people into maybe even a career in 3D modeling or digital art or anything like that. So thank you ever so much for joining me on this adventure. So this video is the most important things that I've learned whilst trying to carve out some sort of career as a 3D artist. So one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen and noticed over the years is people trying to be a perfectionist. And I think most creative people who try and make that their career will suffer from perfectionism along the way at some point. I would say I've been blessed with quite a thick skin and uh, possibly an overconfident personality, which has actually helped me to get through that sort of perfectionist problem. So let me explain further. No one starts off as a master, obviously. We need to build ourselves up to become a master, but all the time we need to be trying to create some sort of career. So we're trying to get work, we're trying to show our work off, but we're not a master, we're kind of at the beginning stages. How do we cope with that? How do we deal with it? Well, the most important thing I feel is to keep producing work because failure is the best teacher and that will teach you how to become a master. You need to keep producing work, keep failing, keep getting it wrong and be okay with that and move on. Now, because I've got a slightly overconfident personality, which is not always a good thing, but in this case, it has helped. It meant I just went for things, just did it anyway, and didn't worry too much what people thought and getting sort of insulting comments back and criticism. And that really is essential, allowing yourself to fail and move on. Without that, you can't learn and grow. So if you're not willing to make those first initial steps, get it wrong, look like an idiot in some ways, you're never actually going to keep going and getting better at that particular field. My first steps into the industry about 25 years ago, I was trying to make short films with my friends and we were trying to uh, get any work that we could. It ended up being simple training videos and things like that. They were quite rubbish, but they were just about passable, just about got through, loads of mistakes in them, but we certainly learned a lot and we, we looked stupid sometimes along the way, that happens, but we learned from those mistakes, we built and we kept trying to get better. If it hadn't been for all those failures, we wouldn't have got anywhere, gained any skill. It would have been very tough to try and do it all on your own without sharing your work or getting any feedback. But those initial stages can be really tough. And I've spoken to lots of people, worked with a few people that really can't get past this perfectionism idea that their first video, their first creation has to be amazing and people have to love it. That perfectionism seems to really hold them back and stop them doing things. They'll think of reasons why they shouldn't do something, they can't start on something because of the fear of failure. So they'll start working on a creative project, they'll have elaborate plans as everybody does for their first project, but they won't finish it because it's not quite right and they're scared of what people are going to think and they wanna push it to that perfectionist stage but it's just taking too long because they haven't got that ability yet. Or in the case of content creators, I've seen them spend absolutely ages trying to film something because it wasn't quite right. Or they spend 20 days editing this one video to try and make it perfect, but they're absolutely exhausted by this time. So the thought of doing a second video is quite a tough one. And because their first video isn't amazing, it's getting, let's say, okay reviews. People are saying it's all right because it's their first video. What can you do? It's, you're going to fail. You're not going to do a perfect video for the first time. So after the first or maybe the second video, they just give up because you can't keep going with that intensity, trying to reach perfection all the time. Now, I'm not saying it's not important to take pride in your work and just produce any old rubbish and get it out there. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is don't overthink it, spend too long on these things. We should be producing things and releasing it and then kind of learning from it and moving on to the next one. And that's where having a thick skin can come in handy because you will produce some things that aren't great, but getting them out there, getting them seen 
is really important for you and getting feedback. Yes, sometimes you'll get criticism that you don't like. Sometimes you might get even insults, which I do quite rarely. But if you want to carve this out as a career, you will need to put yourself out there and you will need to cope with those insults when they happen. Like I say, it's quite rare that they'll happen. Uh, sometimes I get comments about my teeth, as I've probably talked about before, because yes, they have got quite a large gap. I smile quite often, I enjoy smiling, and there is a big gap in my teeth. <laughs> And there will be people out there who are desperate to point that out for some reason and take the time to comment on it. <laughs> you do have to just ignore those comments. They're quite hard. And the more comments I get, the more paranoid I become, I suppose. But you do have to get over yourself. It's not that important, really. You, you need to move on and you need to think about the things and the joy that you're bringing to the other people that actually enjoy your work. There will actually be criticism that you will need to listen to and it's hard to take but it's really important that you do listen to that criticism. My brother was my harshest critic and I think it taught me something in life. I remember one of my first short films, it was total rubbish and I showed it to my brother, but I was very proud of it. And the first titles came up on the screen and he was, oh, that, that, that's, that's cheesy, isn't it? <laughs> and I, I was, it was just so horrifying that he could think that. And at the end of the film, I still said, oh, so, so what do you think? And he was not impressed in the slightest. And he said, well, I suppose the idea was okay. And it was just so crushing. <laughs> but in the end, he was absolutely right. It was a hopeless film and the titles were really cheesy. The font we chose was horrendous. So it was a, it was a massive disappointment. Uh, and after a while, it, after you know the, the shock <laughs> of the harsh criticism, I looked back at the criticism and thought, about it and thought, yes, he's, he's quite correct. I need to figure these things out and I need to get better and move on. And the pain that I was feeling then was nothing compared to the pain that he felt when I punched him in the face. Now, of course, I didn't punch him in the face, I kicked him in the balls. So if you are a perfectionist, then there'll be a lot of you out there. You have to think, why are you a perfectionist? And it's good if you want to achieve the best possible results. But a lot of the time, people are perfectionists because they are worried about people judging them. And therefore, it has to be perfect so that no one can judge them. I read somewhere or probably heard somewhere that our opinion of ourselves is not actually what we think of ourselves, but what we think that other people are thinking of us. So our opinion of ourselves is often tied up in this idea that people are judging us, how people are feeling about us, and it gets twisted and turned and we get this sort of paranoia. And obviously this worry about what people might say, this fear of being judged, this fear of not being perfect in other people's eyes can be really crushing and debilitating and it stops us from producing our creative work. So when I say the next bit, I mean it in the nicest possible way, but we have to get over ourselves. This thought that we are being judged all the time is actually coming from ourselves, not other people. And for those small amount of people out there that are judging you, and there will be some, they're probably not worth your time because they have a lot of problems themselves. Those people that do comment and insult and are desperately critical of other people, they're usually very critical of themselves as well. So that I would say is my most important tip for following any sort of creative goals that you have. It's okay to have perfectionism as a kind of goal, but not let it overtake your life and ruin you from creating. And in essence, I'm saying we need to get over ourselves and our fears in order to move forward and try and have fun with these things. Now, I spent a lot of time on that one. I'll go through the next few tips fairly quickly. The next tip is kind of related to this and it's looking after yourself. So don't beat yourself up when it's not going well and don't be too angry with yourself. I notice a lot of artists do that. Try also not to stress too much about getting work done and rushing things and getting frustrated because it's not working out for you. Try and enjoy the process where you can. Along those lines, make sure that you don't follow the weird sort of entrepreneurial hustler lifestyle, which is getting up at 3 a.m., trying to make a million dollars in the first week. And then, of course, you have to buy their course in order to do that. Maybe there's one or two people that can do that, but it's not really a creative way of being. You, you don't do your best work when you're tired, which leads me on to my next point about getting enough sleep. I've said that before. I'll say it again. Get the right amount of sleep. If you're tired all the time, then you're cognitively not at your best and you're going to find things a struggle and you're going to find them quite hard. As well as this, you should be getting exercise, moving about lots, 
it's not only is that healthy, but it's good for your brain and helps you to think. And you can get more creative ideas if you go for a walk, let's say, rather than sit at a computer staring at a screen for too long. Another really important aspect of looking after yourself, but it goes a little bit further than that, is to work on your relationships with the people around you, your friends and your family. So really try and make the most of and enjoy those relationships. It sounds really super cheesy and obvious, but it's such an important part of your mental health and life in general that you will feel much better and you will produce much better work if that's working in your life. It does actually serve another function as well. If you're happy being around people, you're easier to work with, which I'll talk a bit about later. The next really important point is to practice regularly. Now, this is an obvious one and it's easier said than done a lot of the time. I haven't done any daily drawing for quite a few weeks now because I just have been a bit stuck for time and I haven't felt the pull or the excitement about it recently. And that can be really tough and I'm sure all of you go through that. The main thing I think is to try and enjoy your practice. So try and have that in your mind when you start. Most people kind of enjoy their practice only if they produce something good from it or they can see the sort of beginning where it was rubbish and the end where it was good. But it's not as simple as that and that's why people get despondent with practice quite quickly when things aren't working out. You have to try and remember that this is a creative goal and it should be fun, exciting, interesting and pushing you in a new direction. I like to try and think of the game Pictionary. If you've ever played it, you have to draw something and someone else has to guess what it is. It's quite a fun game because you're interacting and it's funny. You create a mess because you're drawing in such a quick time. But that fun element comes from creativity. So we can be creative and have lots of fun doing it. And that's what it should be about. Yes, there'll be times where you need to learn how to draw a nose and you need to get it right uh, and you need to keep practicing. but it can be a creative thing, it can be fun, and we shouldn't stress about the results all the time. We should try and enjoy the process. So try and think of it as a game where you can. If you are finding the creation process really tough and you're struggling, let's say you're trying to learn Blender, all the tools are really hard, then try and make it easier. At the first, you hope it's not easy. It's a very tough program. But uh, once you get past those initial stages and you know a few things, you can always create low poly landscapes, low poly objects, nice, simple things. And when it gets hard, just go back to those, go back to those simple steps and try and produce something so you can say, yay, I've won sort of thing. Easy wins, I call them. So nice, easy things. When you get bored of those, then you can look at, again, at tutorials, learn the next thing, and then try and um, improve on that and maybe jump up a bit, a bit of a level. If that's getting too hard, then we drop back down again, get some easy wins and then jump back up and hopefully a little higher each time and drop back not so far each time. So all the time you're trying to have fun, you're trying to enjoy yourself and have these easy wins so you feel good about yourself. Now, if you are trying to get into the industry and it's not just a hobby for you, then I would suggest trying to get any experience where you can. Now, this is a contentious issue in the industry and people out there will say, never ever work for free. But I really think that when you're first starting out and you're doing projects for fun anyway, you can just do a project for friends and for free and that's okay. It's an all right thing to do. Um, I built my career on doing that because I wanted to get some experience working with people, having a brief and uh, meeting a deadline as it were. Those sort of things were quite important to me to learn and you have to kind of learn that in a um, environment that you know, facilitates that. When you go to university or college, they will give you pretend assignments and uh, assignments as if a employer is asking you to do something. Uh, so why not get one of your friends and pretend they're the employer and do some work for free? That's okay. If you are at a professional level, I would not suggest doing work for free because obviously you are diminishing your work and it's just not fair on anybody at that point. But getting a few little easy free jobs, that's good. You can drop out them at any time because uh, you're not being paid to do this. So if it gets too stressful or too frustrating, uh, you can just move on and you've learned from that experience. Which leads nicely onto the next point, which is being easy to work with. So like I was saying earlier about uh, your relationships, work on those. Uh, if you're a comfortable person to be around, you, you're generally easy to work with. And those are the sort of people that are sometimes chosen over people that are really good at their craft, but frustrating to work with. I'd rather have someone who's not quite as good, but easy to work with, certainly, uh, because they're better communicator, you can get across your ideas better, and they'll probably, in the end, 
produce better quality than that person who isn't easy to work with. I have had some people in the past that have got quite frustrated at this uh, about, about being easy to work with and they almost demand that other people should accept them for who they are. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't accept you for who you are, but that doesn't mean that you can't be easy to work with. <laughs> And if you are one of those people who finds it a struggle to communicate with people, then uh, look at YouTube videos and try and find out some tactics and tips and tricks for doing those sort of things to help you talk to people. It is a tough thing, but it's another one of those areas where we need to stop thinking that people are judging us. And strangely, we need to get over ourselves and our worries to try and get out there to talk to people and you will end up being easier to work with. The only people that I've worked with in the past that I've found very difficult to work with are those that are very opinionated. So they kind of force their opinions on people and uh, they won't take any criticism of their work and they think it's your fault, not theirs. And perhaps it is, but it's not always the case. So you need to be able to listen to people and debate with people. It's hard these days on the internet, you've either got you're this side or this side and there seems to be no debate, there's no middle ground. But being able to listen to people is a really important quality for being able to work with people. So make sure you have that and do be self-reflective and think, am I forcing my opinions here? Am I, uh, should I accept this criticism or is it the wrong criticism? So uh, consider that. It's, it's not easy all the time, but consider it. On that note comes the next one, which is taking part in the community. So yes, look at other people's work and maybe offer some supportive criticism, constructive criticism, <laughs> criticism. But again, listen to other people's opinions. You don't have to accept them, but listen. It's an important thing to listen and to try and understand where they're coming from when it comes to uh, criticism and ideas. You should be creating content and posting it and talking to people about it. Don't always expect feedback. I see a lot of people posting donuts <laughs> and then saying, quick, give me feedback. I need feedback from, on this. But we've seen so many donuts <laughs> that it's hard to give people feedback all the time on donuts. So maybe uh, you, you might get a bit more feedback if you do something that's a bit more from you rather than just following along with one of the, um, the obvious tutorials that you see out there. So those are all my top tips, but there's one more thing that I want to talk about that might encourage you. Not every day is a perfect day and you'll see me uh, of what seems to be my best. I don't know whether it is all the time, but um, you see uh, me putting on a YouTube video where I'm quite positive. I am generally a positive person, but some days I'm a bit tired and I just feel like I need a break. So I'll have a break and that's okay. You don't have to be getting up at 2 a.m. like these, some YouTuber pro entrepreneurial people will tell you that if you're not doing that, you're lazy and you need to get a life or something stupid like that. It's not the case. Don't beat yourself up if you have a day where you're not doing much. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to not be enjoying things sometimes. Uh, you, you need to have that break, step back, uh, have a day off and uh, get back into it when you can. Don't beat yourself up if you're not practicing every day. I'd like to get back into that rhythm, but at the moment I'm out of it, that's okay. It's all right to be like that. Uh, so get, get some confidence that I'm in this position and I have times where things aren't going so well and I perhaps feel a bit lazy or I'm just not finding the time to do these things or I just uh, stay in bed in the morning and watch TikTok for maybe an hour or something, which sounds dreadful, but you know, occasionally you can do that. It's all right, it's not a big problem. I'm looking forward to getting back into my daily routine of trying to draw something or sketch something. But if it doesn't happen in the next week, it's okay. If it doesn't happen in the next month, it's okay. It will happen at some point. And I've heard some people say, oh, if you stop drawing, uh, then you'll lose the skill. I, it's really not like that because I've had times where I've picked up uh, where I left off. I'm not saying that I'm great or anything, but I feel like it's like riding a bike where you, uh, after a few pedals, you're there and you're back on the bike, even though you haven't ridden it for a year. So take heart from the fact that I've got to this point with half a million subscribers and I have been lazy on many a day. So the last thing I want to talk about is the future of this industry. It's something that has been concerning, I'm sure lots of you out there for the last few months, myself included, uh, the advent of AI and how it seems to be stealing the creativity from artists. So is AI coming for your job? Well, yes it is but so is everything. Because in a way, that's our society. We, we live in a capitalist world where um, we want to produce things quicker and easier and faster, and therefore automating that 
making machines do it is the obvious solution. That in itself shouldn't be a bad thing, but unfortunately in our current global state where people are trying to outdo each other and there's a lot of greed and corruption, it possibly is a worrying thing. I do like to think optimistically and I'm really hoping that it's not the doom and gloom that everybody thinks. So do we all give up? Well, no, you should still do what you love doing and still do what you enjoy doing. Obviously it's there, you should be aware of it, uh, notice it, look when things are changing and try and ebb and flow with the changes. Um, but should you give up and not do it? I, I really don't think that makes sense uh, because it's a nice skill to have anyway, being creative. I might be getting a bit sort of babbly and not making much sense. And it's difficult to make sense of what's coming in the future, but the crux of it is, I still feel like you should carry on with what you enjoy and love. If you are trying to carve out a career, then try not to specialize too much in one area. Try and be a little bit more adaptable. So you, like I say, you can move with the flow of how things are changing. When the day comes that AI wipes out our industry and we're of no use anymore, it's going to be wiping out a whole lot of industries and society's structure is going to have to change in some way. So I suppose we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But for now, to give up on what you enjoy doing and what you love and learning about what you um, want as a career, uh, that doesn't make sense to me either. Whether or not you use AI in your work or not is up to you. Currently, I want to understand it, so I do use it to gain ideas. I have even used it for work as a course image at one point, but I don't find it that great at the moment. Without some sort of creativity to help it along, it's nothing because you can tell it to do something. It comes out with something that looks good initially, um, but when I look at it, I think, oh, it's got that problem, that problem, that problem, and I need to do lots of tidy up before I can use any of it. And uh, I have, like I say, I'll be honest with you, I have used it for a course image at one point. Ethically, I can see there's lots of issues with it, and that's why I understand people who don't want to use it. But to completely dismiss it, I think is a bad idea because uh, I think it's important to understand it. Um, but yes, there's obviously ethical issues, and I understand and appreciate opinions of, and people saying that they don't want to go near AI and um, the anger that's out there as well, I completely understand. I, I don't feel like we can dismiss it because whether we like it or not, it's part of our future. Having said that, I'd understand if people do want to dismiss it and they just want to get on with their own thing, uh, not have it interfere with their own creativity, that I can definitely respect that. Um, but I, I feel as a, a YouTuber and creator and educator, I want to understand what's around the corner so I can edu educate people on it. But it is one of those things that's very contentious. I'm still very undecided on it myself, but I do want to understand it. So I use it in order to understand it and try and uh, see what the future holds. But again, the most important thing is to not stop being creative. Uh, always uh, be excited about creating. And uh, if you want to follow it as a career, I think there will be lots of opportunities. So don't panic about it. So there we have it, my thoughts on how you can pursue a career in the creative industry and hopefully some advice there from my own experience that will help you along. Thank you very much for watching and for those that made it all this way, I'm very impressed with you. You got through quite a long, arduous video of me chatting away. If you did, then uh, stay, I'm still with you because I really appreciate and I like to know that people are listening and <laughs> maybe I won't get any comments saying that. Uh, so you've all switched off and I'm just talking to myself at this point, which is amusing in itself. But if you are here, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.